What I learned from 48 Hours is 48 Hours at the time, right now, now it's murder mysteries, but mm. at the time, it was really, the stories were very character-based stories. So, And we called the people in the stories characters. And I learned um, that it was all about the character, that, uh, you know, big characters sold the story, and that you know, that they could be funny. The editors at 48 Hours at the time were some of the greatest in the business. And uh, they would they would hold on shots on them. You, you could tell so much from just uh, a person's face after they said something or just the little moments. This was the time when 48 Hours was shooting nonstop on a person. So it was taking these little moments. I remember um, I did a piece uh, it was spending 48 hours with Barry Manilow in London and 48 hours before, uh, 48 hours with these people called the Manaloonies. And they were these women of a certain age who loved Barry Manilow. And they were characters, these British fans of Barry Manilow. And they were obsessed and it was very sweet. And Barry Manilow and his people hated the piece because they thought we were kind of making fun of these women, but we were really, it was sweet. We were celebrating them. And I think Barry Manilow wanted, he, his people very much wanted us to think, they were trying to sell us on the idea that he was hip and his fans were really young. But the truth is it was what it was. And that was what the piece was, but it was very sweet. And Richard Schlesinger was the correspondent and he wrote a really funny script and it was very sweet and, and uh, it wasn't the piece that the publicist wanted, but it was a br it was a brilliant piece. It really was, and and so now when I'm in the edit room for Orange County or when I'm watching cuts, it's just you know it's it, those early years of of the Housewives of Orange County or any Housewives. It was all about the cutaway of you know Kim Zolciak and the Atlanta Housewives saying you know you know I'm all about health and fitness and then you cut to her smoking drinking wine on a solo cup while she's driving you know uh whatever it's just about letting the reality tell the story mm -hmm. and so and and that was really I think what defined the housewives especially in the early years it was we were we were winking at the audience from the edit room the bravo and wink the bravo wink and, uh, and we still do it, mm. but we really did it in the early days. And that was something that, that was a big takeaway for me from, from 48 Hours. I did a story with Erin Moriarty, who I was her intern at the morning show, and then I was producing for her a little bit at 48 Hours, and then she did a profile of me for Sunday morning. It's such a crazy world we live in. This is all in the span of 25 years. But uh, we spent we spent a lot of times with Nicholas Sparks. I went to the book convention in Chicago, the ABA, and they handed me a book and they said, this is gonna be a bestseller. It's amazing. And I read it on the plane home and I said, I was sobbing, it was called The Notebook. And I said, wow, this is gonna be a bestseller. It just is. And I gave it to Aaron. I, go, I said, we should do a piece on this guy. He's, he looks like a movie star. His life is about to change. And, and she thought the book was a piece of crap, but she said, it is gonna be a bestseller. So we went down and we did this piece. She left me there and we were shooting with him, or I left the crew there, shooting some stuff of him at night. And while the crew was there, he got a call from home saying that his father had died. And he called me up and he said, I beg you not to use this. This is the most personal moment of my life. And I beg you not to use it. And I don't think that I told Aaron that, the, that this existed on tape. I just said, we're not using it. And I forgot about it. And years later, he wrote a book uh, that was not a fiction book. It was a book about his story. And he wrote in there that he never, forget my, he never forgot my kindness in not airing that. And when the book came out, by that point, I was already at Bravo. And I'm now producing, uh, I'm an executive producer of Top Chef, Flipping Out, Workout, The Rachel Zoe Project, um, The Real Housewives, uh, Project Runway, on and on and on. My mantra at Bravo and since has been, if it happens in front of the camera, we're using it. Mm -hmm. I've had countless calls from people, please don't use the fight between 
my sister Kim and I in the back of the limo, you know, Kyle Richards, uh, um, on and on and on. And, you know, it's sorry, but you signed up for a show about your life and we're going to air everything. Most notably, it is 2015 right now. And I would say a month ago, we aired Vicki Gunvalson getting a phone call from her daughter telling her that her mother died. Mm -hmm. And it was the most real moment, I think, in Real Housewives of Orange County, or I think probably Real Housewives history. And that's a cavalcade of real life moments. But you know, Vicki is someone who we've seen everything happen to on camera. And this was real, and, and uh, she didn't object to it being shown. She said, you know what, this is my life and this is, this is what I'm doing. And there's a moment for me that was so telling in that Orange County episode where um, she called her brother Billy and she put the call on speakerphone because that's what she knows to do because she's been doing it for 10 seasons. Because when you make a call, when you're on The Housewives or any other reality show, you put it on speakerphone so the people at home can hear. And she did it. So she had an awareness, even though she was going through the worst moment of her life, she had an awareness that the cameras were there. Uh, would I do, would I air Nicholas Sparks getting the call if it happened now? It would certainly be a discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, now, there are publicists involved. He, Warner Books would probably be calling, begging us. It would go to the executive producer, Susan Zarinsky. Uh, it would be a big point, you know, it would be a big thing. I can't imagine CBS News not airing that now. Mm. I just can't in this day and age. But I kept it hidden. 